Now we are going to discuss a new topic in the chapter mechanics of fluids that is mercury barometer. We have learned what is pressure and what is atmospheric pressure. Today we are going to discuss about the device which is used to measure atmospheric pressure. Look at the picture. It is the mercury barometer. The device consists of a beaker or a vessel which is filled with mercury. Mercury. This is mercury. And a, an inverted tube. Uh, it is an inverted tube. It is an inverted tube containing mercury and we have some vacuum here and it is placed in such a way that if there is an air column of height H will be formed in the tube. Okay, then we can, we can say that the atmosphere pressure that is PATM or PA is applied on the surface of the mercury and thereby the pressure goes to the goes into the tube and the height varies the height varies according to the pressure given to the uh, surface at the point a that is this is at the point a it is the point consider this is the point b okay now we can say that the pressure at a is equal to pressure at b and we know that uh, the A is exposed to air, that is, it is the atmospheric pressure. That is, atmospheric pressure will be the pressure at the point P because it is of the same level. Because of the same level, the pressure at A and pressure at B will be the same. The pressure at A is given as the atmospheric pressure PA. And we already learned what is PA, that is, it is rho g h. It is the rho g h, that is, from the equation PA is directly proportional to rho or PA is directly proportional to g and PA directly proportional to h. Since these are constants, so we can say that the atmospheric pressure is directly proportional to height of the this the column so we need only we need to measure the height h okay and it is found that at the sea level at sea level the value of h become 76 cm so this is the standard value for mercury uh, mercury barometer at the sea level it is mercury column is having a height of 76 centimeter so we can state pressure in terms of centimeter or millimeter of mercury that is we are getting a new unit of pressure that is called torr we can say that one torr is equal to the pressure equivalent to 1 millimeter. The pressure equivalent to 1 millimeter is termed as 1 torr. The, the name comes under the name Torricelli. Torricelli is a scientist who discovered the mercury barometer. So, 1 torr is a new unit of atmospheric pressure using mercury barometer. Okay, also we have an another unit that is bar. That is 1 bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 Pascal. Okay, this is the another unit. Okay, then we can say that bar and millibar. Okay, so this, this is the mercury barometer. Now, now we are going to discuss another device which is called mercury manometer mercury manometer okay this is used to measure the gauge pressure the gauge pressure what is gauge pressure gauge pressure is the dif difference between two pressures okay that is the, we are measuring pressure difference using mercury manometer so this is the figure shows the mercury manometer and in the at the figure we can we are we are having a u tube 
a u tube consisting of one open end and another closed end the pressure at the closed end will be p and at the open end it will be and consider this is the point a and this is the point b we are having a height h here okay and this is used for measuring pressure differences okay and we are having a u tube containing an u tube containing a liquid a the liquid will be sometimes like oil for small pressure difference small pressure difference we use less density less density liquids and if we want to measure a uh, large pressure difference large pressure difference so we use mercury as in it is high density because it has high density okay so we can use liquid uh, as per the situations now the open end is connected to the atmosphere so it will be at pressure of the atmosphere that is pa okay then d consider the point d you can say that the pressure at pa will be is equal to pressure at d then we can say that the gauge pressure the gauge pressure p minus pa p minus pa is equal to rho gh where p is the pressure of this gas that we can neglect since it is very less than uh, pa so we can neglect it okay then we have the p minus pa it is proportional to the height h okay that is why we can measure the atmospheric pressure and gauge pressure using mercury barometer and mercury manometer now we are going to study the new topic streamline flow a liquid is flowing in a direction like this this is a liquid and we are considering the particle of the liquid like this these are the particles of the liquid so far we discussed about the fluid at the rest now we are going to deal with the fluid in motion fluid in motion the fluid the study of fluid in motion is called fluid dynamic fluid dynamics okay uh, if we say the first particle having a velocity v1 and it is followed by another particle 2 and we can say that if v1 is equal to v2 and the third particle is the velocity the velocity of the first second third and etc up to vn particles is the same is the same then we can say that it is in a steady flow we can say that the 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 fluid is in a steady flow that is the velocity of particles or fluid is constant in time is constant in time then we can say that it is the steady flow it is the steady flow the path taken the path taken by a fluid the path taken by a fluid under steady flow under steady flow is called streamline streamline is defined as the path taken by a fluid under steady flow and it is also can be defined as the curve the curve whose tangent the curve whose tangent at any point at any point is in the direction of is in the direction of fluid flow that is consider a, a curve or a fluid flow like this that is its fluid is flowing in this direction then we can say that any point this any point in the curve is in the direction of fluid flow so then we can say that it is in a streamline position 
okay that is uh, the fluid is in motion we call it as fluid dynamics in order to study the fluid dynamics we want to study the streamline flow when the velocity of each particle is same as the predecessor so we can say that it is in a streamline flow okay now we are going to the next topic that is equation of continuity for that consider the picture it is a streamline flow that is the fluid is flowing in this direction that is it is can be represented as p and a cross section here it can be represented as r and this cross section it is q okay consider the planes perpendicular to the flow it is these are the planes p q r are the perpendicular planes are the perpendicular planes uh, which is in the direction of which is in the direction of flow okay now we are going to study the behavior of the velocity of the fluid so consider the boundaries the boundary we we are having the three planes p q r the boundaries are at the same set of streamline streamline that is the velocity at that is velocity at vp velocities that is these are the velocities velocity at v at p is equal to velocity at vr is equal to velocity at vq okay and if consider if the area that is the area of the particles are v vp and va sorry ar and aq then we can say that what is the equation of density we can say that density is equal to mass by volume then mass is equal to density into density into volume so that is density is represented as rho volume can be represented as volume can be represented as area into velocity that is area is a meter square we are using meter square that is velocity is meter per second that is meter cube per second then that is a into v divided by delta t that is we can that is uh, mass can be represented as density into volume volume in terms of area and velocity can be written as area into velocity divided by delta t and we can say that uh, that is m into delta t is equal to rho a into v this rho a into v we are giving this equation in the three planes applying this equation in p q and r planes we get we get rho p a p v p is equal to rho r v a r v r is equal to that is v rho q a q and v q. since density is same we can cancel the density part in each equation and we get ap vp is equal to ar vr is equal to aq vq so av is a constant this is the equation of continuity It is when area increases velocity decreases and if area decreases velocity increases this we can see that in our pipe or hose if we decrease the area the velocity of the fluid increases and if we increase the area the velocity will be decreases velocity of the this is the equation of continuity that is area into velocity is a constant and now we are going to the next topic that is turbulent flow consider consider a steady flow you can say it as 
streamline or laminar flow consider we are having another streamline flow and i i am placing a rock in the path of the in the path of the streamline we can say that it is no longer steady then we can say that it is in a shape of this that is it is curls here the path of the liquid will be like curls will be a curl that path this path is called the whirlpool it's called the whirlpool the whirlpool like region is called the white water rapids it's this figure that is called the turbulent flow this figure is called the turbulent flow okay this is the streamline flow and this is the turbulent flow now we are going to discuss a new topic in mechanics of fluid chapter that is bernoulli's principle the bernoulli's principle relates the pressure difference of a fluid in a pipe to the kinetic energy and the potential energy or we can say that it uh, it explains the conservation of energy of a liquid flowing through a pipe look at the picture it is a pipe having a narrow end and a broader end let broader end having the uh, area a1 and the velocity of the fluid is v1 and then the for the narrower end the area of the pipe become a2 and the velocity of the fluid becomes v2 then it is at a distance h1 from the position and it is at a distance h2 from the ground okay then p1 is the pressure at the one end and p2 is the pressure at the narrower end okay then h1 is the height and h2 is the height at the two levels okay now let us consider an incompressible fluid flowing through the pipe is flowing through the pipe from one end to the another end and it is in a steady flow the fluid is in a steady flow then fluid obeys equation of continuity that is area into velocity is a constant this is the equation of continuity so that to increase the acceleration of the fluid we must have given external force to increase the acceleration so we have to apply if external force to uh, accelerate the fluid inside the pipe okay then consider the two points consider this portion consider this portion uh, let it be a and this point b b and consider this point c and it is d consider the cross section ab in this cross section we are having a fluid at velocity v1 at an area of cross section v1 then we we have the distance traveled the the distance traveled from a to b can be written as velocity into time that is v1 into delta t this is the displacement the fluid traveled from a to b that is v1 into delta t and that of the distance from c to d can be written as velocity into time that is delta t since we are considering the incompressible fluid and it is in steady flow and it is obeys equations of continuity we can say that uh, the work done the work done to move the particle of liquid from a to b must be equal to the work done by the work done to move the particle from c to d okay we know that work done is the force into displacement the force into displacement okay we also know that force pressure is the force per unit area so force is equal to pressure into area that is so pressure into area into distance that is velocity into time this is the general equation so considering 
the work done on moving the particle from A to B that is equal to force into displacement. The force at the point 1 is a P1 A1 the into V1 into delta T. This is the work at the section AB and that of the work at CD is equal to P2 A2 into V1 into delta T. We know that P is the pressure, A is the area, V is the velocity of the liquid and T is the time taken uh, to reach from C to D. Okay, then we can equate this equation as P1 A1 V1 delta T is equal to because it obeys equation of continuity because it uh, obey equation of continuity we can write it as uh, WAB is equal to WCD and the net work done and the net work done on the fluid that is delta W is equal to W1 minus W2 is equal to that is we can cancel this uh, delta T and delta T so we get P1 minus P2 and A1 V1 and A2 V2 that is the volume that is the volume we can be uh, represented as A1 V1 or is the velocity then we can say that it is the rate of change of volume that is the extra work done delta W is consumed or transferred into change in kinetic energy and potential energy. Since we, we have the phi position as this and V1 is the first velocity and V2 is the second velocity and this is the height H1 and this is the height H2. We are having a, a varying kinetic energy in this area and in this area also we have different potential energy in this region and potential energy other than that in the second part okay up so the work done del, uh, delta w is applied to change in the kinetic energy and potential energy while the liquid pass through the pipe okay then also we we have mass is equal to density into volume that is mass is equal to delta m is the mass uh, in the section mass in the section A to B or C to D is the delta M mass of the fluid is equal to rho into delta V is the volume of this portion this portion a volume of this portion is the delta V and also we have the change in potential energy the change in potential energy that is potential energy is given as delta U this is a change in potential energy that is delta m g delta h that is we can say that rho into delta v that is mass is the density into volume and g into delta h that is rho delta v g delta h can be given as h2 minus h1 Okay, this is the change in potential energy. Also, we have the kinetic energy given as delta K that is equal to half delta M and delta V. v. This V is the velocity, V square. That is, it is equal to half delta M is the density into volume and this is the V2 velocity, V2 square minus v1 square okay in the above equation we state that the work done will be equal to the change in kinetic energy plus change in potential energy that is we can relate that that is we have the work energy theorem that is we have delta w is equal to delta k plus delta u that is we have the delta w uh, that is p1 minus P2 into delta V is equal to what is the uh, kinetic change in kinetic energy? Half rho delta V into V2 square minus V1 square plus rho G delta V into H2 minus H get P1 minus P2 that is equal to half rho v2 square minus v1 square 
plus rho g h2 minus h1. Rearranging the equation, we get p1 plus half rho v1 square plus rho g h1 is equal to p2 plus half rho v2 square plus rho g h2. That is, in general, we can write as, that is, p1 plus half rho v square plus rho g h is a constant. Is a constant. This is the Bernoulli's principle, where p is the pressure at, the, at a point, pressure of the liquid at a point, rho is the density of the fluid, V is the velocity of the fluid and G is the gravitational constant and H is the height from the ground. Height from the ground. So, this is the Bernoulli's principle which relates the pressure with the kinetic energy and potential energy of a uh, liquid.